Hey, welcome back to a brand new section. We're still talking about object-oriented programming, but we're moving on from the basics. So this section covers a couple of things. I'll just lay out the objectives first. We're going to talk about inheritance, what that means, why you'd use it, and then we'll learn how to define or to add inheritance to our classes, including something called multiple inheritance. Then we'll learn uh, what method resolution order is and understand how it works and why you need to care about it. MRO that's coming up. Then we'll talk about a fun word called polymorphism, which sounds a lot more intense than it actually is. And then finally, we'll learn how to add special methods to classes. I know it doesn't sound very specific, but we'll just wait until we get there to talk about what that means. And now let's just dive right in and start talking about inheritance. Okay, so here's a slide that says inheritance. Imagine that we have our user class from the last section. I'm making a website like Reddit. I don't know if everybody uses Reddit, but on Reddit, if you sign up for an account, you're just a base regular old user. But on each subreddit, there are moderators who are just regular users who have been promoted or selected as moderators to help moderate the content, remove things that are either against the rules or inappropriate, um, you know, help handle trolls and spam and all this other stuff. And then further above that, there's another level called admin administrator. And I think admins based, I don't know exactly how it works, but let's just say in our example, admins can remove any comment by anyone, regardless of the subreddit or wherever it is on the site, they can delete anything, uh, change things in the database, do whatever they want. So there's different levels, but we want three classes. And let's say we're trying to represent all three of those with our code. What we could do is make three different classes, user, moderator, and admin, but there's a lot of content that's shared between them. Each one has a username and an email address and a password. And each one has a method called comment and log in and log out. And all of that functionality is exactly the same to all of them. What we could do instead of redefining that everywhere is use inheritance to actually only write it one time in a base class. So that's what inheritance allows us to do. It allows us to define a class which inherits functionality from another class, which we usually call a base or parent class. So in the example that I just gave, we could have a user base class that had all of the things like username, email, login, logout, comment, and then administrator could inherit from user. Likewise, moderator could inherit from user. But we're gonna start off with something a bit simpler. And first we have to actually answer how we create this relationship, how do we tell Python that one thing is inheriting from another? And it looks like this. We pass the parent class as an argument to the definition of the child class. So we haven't seen this. Here I have two classes, one called animal. This is the base class. And then I'm defining a class cat. It doesn't do anything at all. But notice that there's an argument being passed in the name of the animal class. So usually we just write our classes like this up until now, but if we actually pass in an argument like this, it tells Python this cat class inherits from the animal class. So here's the same code just in a sublime file so we can run it. Uh, all that's going on, I have an animal class and there's a class attribute called cool, I set it equal to be true. And then there's an instance method called make sound, which takes a sound like meow or growl or woof or whatever, and it prints this animal says, and then the sound. So we could make a new animal, you know, uh, a equals animal, and then do a dot make sound, and let's go with chirp, like that. If we execute the code, it says, this animal says chirp. That makes sense, this should not be new. We're making a new instance of animal, and therefore we can run animal instance methods on an instance. But now, if I create a cat, let's go with blue equals a cat, and notice there's nothing inside of cat. You do have to add this pass, otherwise Python will give you an error saying expected an indented block if you don't have that there. But there's no init or anything else right now, but there's no data we're passing in either. No instance uh, attributes or instance methods in cat, but it inherits from animal. And so if I run this now, and then I just do, let's do blue dot make sound, and then pass in a sound like meow, blue's a cat. And if I run it, we get this animal says meow. 
even though make sound is defined as an animal instance method, I could also do something like print blue dot cool. And cool is a class attribute added on animal. But blue has access to it. And actually I could do the same thing with cat dot cool and animal dot cool. Because the cat class inherits from the animal class, the class attribute cool is available. So I should see three trues printed out. Cool. One thing we can use a built-in function called isInstance will actually verify for us that blue is a cat, but blue is also an animal. So let me just show you. If we just pass in blue and then a name of a class, like animal, let's start with cat. And let's just do a print isInstance. I'm going to co uh, comment everything else out. So is instance is a Boolean method should return true or false if blue is a cat. And we get true. And if we change it to is blue an animal, we also get true. And technically, we could change it to is blue object. So all of these classes, every everything in Python inherits from the base object class. So by running this, we also get true. And we could use is instance. We could test if a list is a list. So you may not use is instance that often, but here it illustrates to us that blue is an instance of cat, but at the same time is also an instance of animal. And of course, this is a really silly example with no init methods, no uh, instance attributes, really nothing going on. But I'll show you in the next video when we have something more complex, how it really can help save a lot of space in your code, a lot of time, and just reduce duplication. So that's coming up next. But for now, this is a quick intro to the idea of inheritance. Next, I'll show you how to actually use it in practice.